you get 100% uh, of the dead objects out? This process does find all the objects. The mark sweep is guaranteed to get a list of all the referenced objects that were referenced at the point where it began. The record possible dead will take the current object table and remove all the referenced objects from it, creating a possible dead. If there's a reference to a possible dead object, the voting will find it. If there's an old write that has a reference to a possible dead object, this will find it. Okay, new dead objects, done. So if something is referenced during the mark sweep but is removed from it, then we won't catch it on this garbage collection cycle. It will have to wait to the next one. If it takes a week to do a garbage collection, you'll have some new objects, some dead objects. If you dereference an object during this point, then it will not have been included in this because it was referenced when we began. An object that was referenced when we began will not get garbage collected. We won't catch things that got dereferenced after we started. How this works will depend on your application. If you create a million objects and dereference 500,000, half a million objects, every week, then each week you'll reclaim half a million, but it might be the half a million that were dereferenced two weeks ago rather than this week. It's application dependent, yes. But this process does work. It should not dereference any live objects, and it should eventually catch all the dead objects. Takes another no. takes another cycle. Now, if it was referenced by something that was referenced by something that was referenced, we will catch it because the only way to find live objects is tracing from the root. And so we will catch circular references. If they're not referenced from the root, when we start, we will catch them. If you have no users logged into the system, except the one doing garbage collection, you do a garbage collection and there's no activity, then doing a second garbage collection won't catch any more. Other questions? Yes? Does this process actually reduce the size of the extent file? Good question. Does this reduce the size of the extent? The answer is no. This adds object IDs to the free object ID list. This adds pages to the free page list. It may be that the free pages are not at the end of the extent. You might have gaps in the page usage. So the free page might come early. And we can't actually rearrange the pages because the page is an offset in the extent. So if there's a live object on a page near the end of the extent, even if there's free pages in the middle of the extent, we can't move them around because that page number is based on its position in the extent. If it happens that the end of the extent has only free pages, there is a command that you can send to the system that says remove free pages from the end of the extent. So if there's free pages at the end, you can ask the system explicitly to shrink the extents. So there's a shrink extents message that you can send to the repository that says if there's free pages at the end, then shorten the file size. But that doesn't remove gaps in the middle. What you can do is you can perform a full backup. Now we discussed an online backup where you copy the extent. That, of course, won't do it. There's actually another backup process that creates a file that isn't made up of pages. You can create a backup, and the backup is made up of objects with object IDs and object references, but no pages. An object backup as opposed to a page backup, simply goes through the entire repository, not for live objects, but for every object that's defined in the object table. So every object ID that's in use, it goes, it finds the object on whatever page it's on, and it writes that object to a backup file. That creates a file that contains all your objects, whether referenced or not, and no pages. When you restore from that backup file, it reads the backup file, and it takes each object out of the backup file and it puts it on a page. There's no gaps. It will create new pages, 
it will take all the objects that are in the backup file and it will write them to new pages starting from the beginning of the extent so a backup and a restore will shrink the extents. This implies you stop the database. While you're doing a restore, it's restoring the objects that are in the backup file. This is not an online backup. An online backup is a copy of the extents, and if you copy the extents, then you're copying the pages. If you make an object backup, a new file that contains only objects in it, you can restore that. Now, once you've restored that, part of a backup contains the information of what the commit record was and what the tran log was at the time the backup started. You can then apply transactions afterwards. And so you can't actually do this on a live system, but you can restore a copy of a live system and you can take the tran logs that came from the live system and you can apply them to the backup. And we actually have customers that do this. They keep a warm standby, keep a copy of the database, but they keep this copy of the database not in operational mode, but in restore mode. So you can have an extent. An extent knows whether it's in restore mode or run mode. And if it's in restore mode, then you apply tran logs to it. For example, one customer, they have data centers in two different locations. They have two data centers. They have their production database in one data center. They have a backup database in the other data center. And every 15 minutes, they start a new tran log. They copy the old tran log to the backup data center. They apply the old tran log to the backup database. If a bomb or a fire takes out the data center, the most they ever lose is 15 minutes of data. That's for the catastrophe that takes out an entire data center. Gemstone does not support hot backups in the sense of you have a duplicate database that contains everything up to the last transaction. We have a design for it, and we offered it to a customer that was asking, and they decided that it was not important enough to fund the development. If you think that's a problem and you want to fund the development, we can do it. We can do it.